Good evening. My name is Thurman Greco, and this is the show called Let's Live with Thurman Greco, which comes to you uh, on scenic uh, Woodstock Educational Television, Channel 23, and also from YouTube. And uh, you can reach me at and, and all of our many guests uh, on Let's Live with Thurman Greco YouTube. And there are segments, one hour segments, on this channel on YouTube that go back 20 years. So it's been, it's been a wonderful neighborhood networking project now for 20 years and we have a really fun group of guests this evening because they don't necessarily come uh, representing themselves but they are representing the Historical Society of Woodstock which is a fabulous place which I, which I understand is growing. Is that, that's very interesting. Yes. Do you think that's because of the new population? Why is it growing? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it is growing because people keep donating things to the Historical Society. We, we, we're like the repository. So at some point in time, you've got to expand a little bit, you know. And, but we've got new members on the board. You know, mm -hmm. Debbie's been working hard, and other people have been working hard to get new members. So, um, Well, if you're on, will, will you take a moment now and introduce yourselves? Tell. Tell people who you are and what brought you to the Woodstock uh, Society. Um, I'm Debbie Hepner. Um, I've lived in Woodstock my entire life, but what actually brought me to the Historical Society was my husband, who's Richard Hepner, who is our town historian. And when he got involved, mm -hmm. he sort of thought I might have a little bit of knowledge having been here, as has my family for many generations. So he pulled me along and it's now been over 20 years. You know, that's really interesting because when I first started reviving uh, Let's Live with Thurman Greco, someone came up to me and said, well now, one of the people that you must get on your show is Richard Hepner. You can't have a program like this without Richard. And he has been on several times already. Mm -hmm. And then we have another repeat guest also. Well, sure. And uh, so the, the, the story of uh, Janine and history starts back in 1987 when John and I were involved in uh, things going on in town on a pretty regular basis. And we came to that point in life in Woodstock where we had the bicentennial 1787 to 1987 and so I sort of got intrigued by this building that had all these artifacts in it and I was uh, you know just became very curious and start you know because I was younger than everybody else they were happy to have me at that time now I'm at the other end of the spectrum where I'm older than everybody else I'm doing the same thing that these ladies did for me year, years ago so so I've kind of uh, you know served different capacity and had a lot of fun and done a whole lot of different things through learning about Woodstock history and, and sort of teaching about it so all these years. So it's kind of fun. I enjoy doing it. Well, now, I understand, first of all, that you guys have a lot of books there. Yes, well, we have, primarily, we have, uh, we have a holiday sale coming up, which is, uh, it's been almost 20 years, right? We've been doing this Roughly. sale, yes. So it's one of the biggest fundraisers that the Historical Society holds, and it's the first two weekends in December Right? Yes. Yep. Third, fourth, that, uh, third yeah. fourth, tenth, and eleventh. Right. Oh, so it's four days. Four yeah, days. Yeah, two, the, two weekends. And the first weekend coincides with the Holiday Open House, which is held by the Chamber of Commerce sponsors that. And if you haven't been to a Holiday Open House in Woodstock, it's, it's just one of the most lovely times in town to walk around town. You visit all the shops. All the windows are decorated. And uh, then you come up. I, I suggest you come to us first. So come to the Historical Society first, and then go walk around town. So we do it that way, right? Because yes. we close at uh, what time on Saturday on or fri Friday? We're, we we're not open on Friday. Oh, uh -huh, we're not open Friday night. Look no. at that. Let me get the memo. I don't know if you've been. The Historical Society is located on Como, Como Drive going up to the town offices. So it's a very dark mm. route going up there. We often were open on Friday nights, but now we, we feel like we should just sort of celebrate the weekend of the open house. So we are open on Saturdays and Sundays, nine to three. Okay, that's and, good. And um, so that it's, it's very bright. There's a wonderful little path that will take you up from the lower town parking lot. Um, but we do also have handicapped parking at the Historical Society. Is the Historical Society, Society up at the end of Como or is it down in the? The lower Como parking lower, lot. Right yeah, it's, it's sort of halfway up on yeah. the right. It looks like an old farmhouse. 
tucked away with a porch, tucked away sort of in, in, in the woods. It's not necessarily easy to find, but we do have signs, and we'll have big signs right, um, right. for those two weekends, one at the end of the driveway, and one at the end of the road, and then another one at the driveway. Uh, I always tell people, turn right after the speed bump sign. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. But you're absolutely yeah. right. We, um, we have a gift shop that's open yeah. um, during our, our exhibition season starts in the spring and actually just ended mm -hmm. about a week ago. So we ha hold three history art exhibitions during the course of the spring, summer, and fall. But we have a, a, a gift shop um, in which we sell local items and we do have one of the largest local book selections in the community. So it's well, well worth I, coming to I see. I think that's a very important thing mm -hmm. because from my perspective, Woodstock has a lot of writers and now we are transitioning away from going to the publisher to going to uh, where our resource, wherever right. that might be. Mm -hmm. And so they're not connected to anyone. So you have all these people that are writing things and printing things and releasing things and selling things, mm -hmm. but they're all like individual. There's no, so I see your bookstore as being possibly mm -hmm. a point of confluence. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a possibility. I mean, we try to focus on local writing, local stories about Woodstock. Mm -hmm. I mean, that this is just, I picked this one up because it's a, biography of Alf Evers, uh, the historian before Richard, mm -hmm. uh, and it was done by Ed Sanders, and it was self-published, too. Too, It's not by a big uh, big publishing house that you're, uh, you know, we're all tr not ever going to be able to get into the way we write. You know, you and I do the same kind of thing, but um, but we, so we have a, a, a limited amount of space, to, mm -hmm. so we have to kind of be careful who, how much we can take in. You know? That is a trademark yeah. of Woodstock, yeah. isn't yeah. it? We always have to be very careful because we don't have enough, enough space. Well, not enough space. Yeah. I know. If I, we had an unlimited income, we'd have a whole lot of space. It'd yes. be a different story, <laughs> but we don't. Yeah. We also published some of the books ourselves. This one, um, Sarah of Overlook Mountain, was written by um, a local Woodstock resident, Jean White, mm -hmm. that told the story, the memoir of her grandmother um, who grew up on Overlook Mountain. And Jean herself was an artist, and she illustrated it. And she died about a year ago and left the rights to this book to us. And we publish it and we sell it for $15. Mm -hmm. But nowhere else can you get it other than the Historical Society of Woodstock. And it's just a wonderful glimpse of, of life in Woodstock in the earlier years. She taped her grandmother, mm -hmm. um, who was Sarah Cash Dollar, who was quite a, um, a personality in Woodstock during the early yeah. 1900s. Yeah. And, um, and so that's, it's really, we try, to, we try to have a lot of books like that. But we also have books, we do also have a section of books that are just by Woodstock authors. So they may be a novel or they may be a book, um, not necessarily about Woodstock, but written by someone who lives in Woodstock. So we do try to encompass as much as we can in our small space. Oh, what's fits on the shelf, right? Yes. <laughs> right. So what, at, beyond the books, what else do you guys have in your small space? Um, we also sell, our big sellers this year, <laughs> where um, we sell local maple syrup, and we um, made by actually my brother, Don Allen, and his friend, Tommy Chase. So it's as local as you can get from the maple trees. They travel around Woodstock collecting sap. Um, the past couple of years, we've been selling homemade jam by um, this Creekside, Creekside Farms, yep. um, which is in Greene County. Yes, yeah. And she just, it's, it's just fabulous and uh, so many different flavors. And she also sells it during the summer at the flea market, mm -hmm. but at our holiday fair, she has a lot of special spicy holiday flavors. Um, we sell, we made Christmas, or, we sell Christmas ornaments. We have a few up there. Um, these are so much fun. I really love these. The artist is very talented. Mm -hmm. Do we have a name for this artist? What? She's sitting next to me. <gasps> me, <I> me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th those are my contribution. Yeah. But we also have se many vendors. Several. We I think we have about twelve vendors this year who are setting up booths and um, and. Um, for example, these ornaments are, are just one piece by Gary Beagle, who does wonderful peace mm -hmm. sign art. Um, S Suzanne Nelson comes from Shokan, and she has jewelry, and she makes her own incense, and, and she has um, crystals and stones. Crystals and stones. Yep. Um, 
this wonderful woman, Joyce, makes her own jewelry. I would tell you her last name, but it's very long and I can't pronounce it. But if you can see, I have fish earrings mm -hmm. on that I'm, I really love, and she makes them in all different colors. Um, we also have some local artists. Um, Chuck Howland um, sells, will sell, sell some of his artwork. Um, we have, um, this year, we're going to have weaving um, mm -hmm. that Judy Chase, who is a local weaver, will be doing. Um, we Those have. Are, they're part of the Woodstock Weavers, who are one of our shows early. Early, early, early on early the, early year. the year. Yeah. Um, Mira's Naturals. That actually <laughs> is a is a company that is located on the Longyear Farm, and they have bees. And she makes a whole um, series of um, body care products from from the honey. So it's lip gloss and lotion and and yeah. salve and. And, and disinfected and all sorts of things, which yeah. is sort of fun. fun. Um, and we, um, all, this year, for years, we made homemade cookies and we would sell them in tins. And we actually were selling 50, 60, 70 tins of cookies every <laughs> season, um, sort of with more of a COVID idea. Um, every, we are going to be doing baked goods, specially mm. packed, prepared individually. So homemade shortbread, homemade peanut, but, peanut brittle, chocolate chip, um, gluten-free. Um, cookies um, and then also knit goods you can see we've had yeah. we have afghans hats scarves um, a variety all kinds of good stuff and these are made donated to us by uh, lots of times the the famous Woodstock cookers will will come along and drop off some stuff for us and we have other members that make, <coughs> make things I have I have a scarf that's still under construction so if you're into a red and white scarf it, it should be done by <laughs> December 2nd so you know, we all do what we can okay. do and uh, donate our time and our energy to help uh, support the Historical Society. Actually, and a big um, success last year is that we did a vintage corner. Mm. So carefully curated, um, not yard sale, vintage old little old pictures and, and, um, and tablecloths and plates and bowls. It was just um, very successful. People yeah. enjoyed sort of a little... So it was like a little antique shop in the corner. It's a little of bit of everything, and Debbie's done a great job. She's kind of been the the spearhead of keeping this energy for this uh, holiday sale alive. But uh, she's done an amazing job. I have to tell you this uh, to expand it every, in yes. the small space that we use we fill in it. this room. Debbie has figured out how to bring in these different products from different vendors, and it's just working out wonderfully. Mm -hmm. And it is our big it's our biggest fundraiser throughout mm -hmm. the whole year, uh, basically. Yes. It, it, you know, then comes the membership uh, fundraising that mm -hmm. we do that'll come again in the spring of 23. But this is sort of the way that we help bolster our um, mm -hmm. our funds that we need to keep the building open and operate what we do, what the only other things we do, so. We also sell holiday cards that come from images mm -hmm. in our collection. Yeah. So either from, um, I know Woodstock has a real history, the artists of making their own holiday cards. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have, we have a huge collection in our archives as well as an, we have over 700 pieces of artwork in our archives. So we, we, have, we have a number of, we have about seven or eight different images of, that, that are sort of wintry and a little holiday yeah. that we sell. And, um, and we provide um, very good spiced hot cider, free, free of charge, yes. Um, yes. For, um, to, so people can sip on that while they shop. And, free greens yes. in holly that yep. we fill we fill a bench on the front porch and they're there for the taking yeah take it on take it on it's really a festive atmosphere the whole the whole you know each day has its own energy but everybody's in good spirits and everybody lo loves to see what has come out that's new and and some people look forward to doing this you know coming and purchasing the same things every year well, you know mm -hmm. kind of thing so now this is your primary fundraising project for the year it is the one that supports us the most as far as having a sale yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. what other uh, fundraising projects do you have Debbie does a springtime um, we yeah, do a yard sale a yard sale right well I, I actually sort of um, creatively call it a community estate sale <laughs> in that people um, People, actually, people. I started out by asking, you know, generally out to the community to go into your attics, and everyone's cleaning out these yeah. days. So um, to bring things, I received so many things, I, I really could barely find places for it. So now we're a little bit more um, thoughtful about how much we we have because what you don't sell, you have to find other homes for, but True. we have that in the spring, and that's usually a, a very successful. It's becoming, I think, more popular as it goes on. This is probably the 
fifth year or sixth mm-hmm. year you've been doing We've that? We've been it doing seems like, Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, people, this, we wanted to do something, I think, philosophically that people look forward to every year. People can know that, oh, yeah, that's going to happen in April and this happens in December. So that people can sort of, how yeah, you get that, you build your energy of anticipation about it and that kind of thing is what's nice about that. So, And Woodstock's a very generous community mm-hmm. uh, as far as uh, for, for us, for the Historical Society as a whole, the whole unit of um, the organization. Woodstockers are very generous and so we, we, we're happy about that and we're thankful for that too, that they're generous like that. So, Well, what, do you have other projects throughout the year? You have this one in December, you, you have uh, the the project in April. Is there something else between April? As far as fundraising, no, no. We've um, not, we have not in the past. We've done yeah. we've done concerts. Right. Um, yeah. We did do a. Um, um, we have a large collection of the Woodstock dress in our collection. There was a young um, 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 a, a designer in, um, in in Olive who made a modern day version of the Woodstock dress, and the Christian Scientist lent us their space. And we had a, a musical fashion show. Um, we, we showed off our old dresses, but we also had a lot of local Woodstock mm-hmm. women modeling new dresses. And then we had a um, tea party afterwards. Yes, that's true. With, I forgot with, about with that. homemade. Yeah. Jeez, we're really yeah. um, known for we we only serve homemade refreshments, <laughs> homemade cook, um, cookies. Um, you know, cakes. The tea party was tea a pa- lot of fun. The tea party was again. a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's sort of it's sort of you know interesting. And even yeah. when we do non cookie things. Again, we have some wonderful cooks and bakers um, who volunteer and who help us out. Well, we went through a cycle of fundraising. This is more than five years ago. We had wine tastings, and which were like over the top fun. They yeah. were really yeah. fun. And we was, did that for yeah, three, yeah. three years. Yeah, that and was just fantastic. A, yeah. a, a wine expert in the area who had taught, actually in California, had talked, t- taught at a community college about growing grapes and making wine. Um, a new lot volunteered his time and helped us put together a um, just a, a variety of wines um, tasting that were reasonable and fabulous. Yep. And then we all made um, food hors d'oeuvres that, yeah. hors d'oeuvres did that you do were by the cookbooks. Well, remember? we did. Yeah. Some of them were. We yeah. did food that were the tasting part. And um, then we had some Irish music. But we had some get interesting yeah, music. The, the folks that play uh, the, on the Irish night uh, in town uh, locally came and did some. Hey, but you had Perry. Perry Beekman was there too. He right? was there for one of our yeah, one yeah. of our. So we, yeah. So we had really a, a, a really good yeah. time, and we try to make you know the, like the tickets for our wine tasting were um, I think thirty dollars, yeah. and you just people just yeah. He's um, the man who organized it said that Woodstock tasting is different than any other place <laughs> because it's not ju- you know it's a glass, yeah. <laughs> not a tasting, but it was a fun it was a fun yeah, experience, was and um, and we tried to keep any of our activities really reasonable. We want to really um, have a wide range of yeah. people. We want feel everybody to be able to come. Enough to our functions. Yeah. So so if you are a new resident yeah. or maybe you a long time resident or whatever, mm-hmm. what is going to motivate someone to join the Historical Society? That's the question of the day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they can, we, anyone can join as a membership. It's uh, just go to the website and you can become a member and financially mm-hmm. support us. Uh, what would drive a person to do that if they, they, would, they have a, an interest in history, they have an interest in supporting an organization that preserves history. Uh, but the other part of your question in my, what, from the way I received it was, how does a person decide they want to come and volunteer? Right, right, which is, exactly. the, which is the hard yes, part, the right? Hard part. And, the, and I think the person has to, um, Someone has to want to give up some time, and we always say you can give up as much or as little time as you want, and you always, Debbie will attest, it's always been the philosophy. Mm -hmm. You have to like what you're working on. You have to be having fun, and it has to come from the heart, and just enjoy it and learn a little bit and be part of a a team. That We we work independently, but we work as a team. Mm -hmm. We have this wonderful little relationship kind of thing. So how do you motivate somebody? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But we also have, you know, we have a large archives and, you know, we're an all-volunteer organization, which is important. There are no paid employees. So work, the work we do in the archives, you know, putting things up, creating our database, you know, packing things in a safe way, um, when things are donated, doing all the paperwork involved. So we have volunteers who work in the archives. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people like to volunteer because they're new here and they want to learn about this right. community. Yeah. So what a great way 
to do that by spending a couple hours a week our surrounded by right? our history. Right. Mm -hmm. are, so, are, are there openings for new residents? We have so many new residents mm -hmm. that it's hard to even find an old resident when you stumble <laughs> down the sidewalk. <laughs> so you can, there is a place for these new young people. You know, yes. I put this, this together, I don't know if, it, if you can see it, but it's the email address. Um, if somebody's interested in volunteering, I don't know if that will come up or not, but um, it's uh, info at historical society of Woodstock org. There you go. Sounds good. Any questions? If somebody wants to volunteer, they want to see what they can get into, they can just send an email there. The person that answers that email is the president of our board right now. So they'll get it and they'll uh, send it to the right place, you know, to the person that wants to, uh, that they can, you know, either see about what they can do, where they can volunteer, how they want to help. You know, we, it's, um, it's, why, it's not wide open necessarily because there are certain talents that we need. What are those talents? Well, we need people that like to do boring things like scan photos, <laughs> um, you know, that kind of stuff. We need people that can sit down and just, you know, write accessioning under the direction of somebody else. They'll sh we'll show you how to do it, that kind of stuff. We need people that can help with the sales. We need people that can help put exhibits up. We need mm -hmm. people that can do that kind of just boring old work like put the stuff out for the yard sale I mean you know you need a, a certain amount of people to help mm -hmm. do that you know those are the um, unglamorous kind of things that we need help with you know that kind of stuff you need somebody to stand for parking when you have an event you know you need somebody at the bottom of the hill where uh, into the lower coma and say go that way <laughs> don't go that way you know there's the parking it's, it's, it's all kinds of stuff that people we, we're open for that kind of stuff. And people come, we just, um, we, we're also opening, we just had three things that Janine and I thought of while you were talking, but yeah. I'll let Jean talk, Janine tell you about the, we did do a really interesting fundraiser this summer, I can't believe we forgot it, but um, we also op recently opened up an additional building. We have a, a mm -hmm. large tool collection, which mm -hmm. had been stored away in crates and boxes, and a new, a new member was really interested in tools, so he took this on, he went through all the tools. We have a shed. He renovated the shed. And hopefully next spring we'll be opening up our permanent tool shed exhibit. And there's farm implements and, and ice cutting. Fun. And, and, we'll fun. Be, and we'll be doing um, demonstrations based on a, a lot of those tools. And we also had, um, we had many people who come to our exhibits. And many of them are very specific um, on a specific topic could be on an artist, it could be on a, on a time period, it could be on the village, but new people, they want to know the story of the community. So Richard has been working on a permanent exhibit, which, is, which will be up, which will, will not change other than being updated, that really gives the story of Woodstock from you know, its inception yeah. in 17... Yeah, yeah 1787. Seven, yeah. You know, up till, um, you know, certainly up to recent times. But we did do a really interesting well, project this so summer. I, I just want to, one thought on the tool shed, you were asking about uh -huh. volunteers. This is sort of, the tool shed had been in the back of our minds for a long time, how to display all these tools that we had, and it just had to wait for the right person to come along. And that was Michael. And that was Michael, and it took how, you know, a decade or more. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea went out on the table, God, what, we've got to get these tools out where people can see them, and then Michael joined, Michael had the interest, and you know, bam, it's happening. What, so, uh, what other projects do you have well, what we that did, are waiting for uh, a person? Well, I'll tell you what we did. Here's, here's something we did new this year, which we would have people help with next year if we can do it again, is, is the uh, Theater on the Road collaboration, mm -hmm. right? So uh, Theater on the Road, Frank Marquette approached us we talked a little bit before COVID about doing some sort of a presentation. He does reenacting. And uh, so finally, we got through COVID. The idea was still there. And the energy all came together. And we had this summer where they, uh, Frank and his writers, put together, I think there were eight characters. And they had a script writer. She wrote the script based on some of it is historical fiction, some of it's historical fact. And she blended it all together in an amazing way. And we had these was two shows mm -hmm. uh, at Ames on a stage, and they did uh, readings from the play of uh, the characters. So, like, say Sarah of Overlook Mountain could have been a character, and the reader would have talked as though they were Sarah. And it was fantastic, just uh, fantastic. And it was a little fundraiser, mm -hmm. and uh, so 
we're going to go into talks about maybe doing it again next year with a whole set of different characters. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe the same ones again. You never know. <laughs> I'm not involved in it that closely. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but it brought it out a, a good, lot of people yeah, who really, yeah. and we had it, yeah. if, if, you, if you go up there, the other thing is there's the Alf, the um, Alf Evers Park, which is mm -hmm. located right next to the Historical Society. Right. It's a lovely field with um, benches, and so we created the stage in the field. Yeah. So it was done outside, and it yeah. was really it's just fantastic. a lovely And the afternoon. weather gods cooperated, so that beautiful. was like the big worry, what was going to happen with the weather. But uh, there's a little apple orchard back there that um, over time the apple trees are, are just doing what apple trees do, which is they're coming to the end of their life. So there's a talk about planting new That's apple another trees another project, there. That, yeah. because they, they were the Jonathan apple. Right. The, the th when we moved there, there were three of those trees that were still there, but hurricanes and age, just age right? and whatever yeah. have yeah. really, now there's one poor tree struggling to survive. Right. So right. that is another plan on our table. We'd like to recreate a little bit of that. Right, and that, uh, so again. I, if I understand that correctly, that's another fundraising yes. place where we would have to raise the funds to buy the trees. And then you need to plant the trees. And then, plant someone them. And then you have to them. And then nurture guard, them. Nurture yeah. them. Yeah. And nurture them. them. And kick the big fence in so the deer don't eat them all up while they're little. Mm -hmm. But So there's always something going on. And there's always a need. And the other thing that happens is when someone new comes along, suddenly there's energy and ideas for projects that we never even thought of. And we're like, well, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's think about it. So that's the, mm -hmm. the good thing about having new folks roll in. And... Uh, you know, and when we say new people, we, I don't mean somebody that came here a year ago. I mean, somebody that came here 20 years ago is kind of still new. They're still learning about mm -hmm. Woodstock, and they, or they may be new to volunteering. There's all different kinds of new, mm -hmm. and if you think of it that way. So um, it all turns out to be good most, most of the time. It's all good. We yeah. also have tried to have worked on children's programming. Mm -hmm. um, actually, just recently, um, jo Joanne Margolis mm -hmm. and Jill Lesker did a program with the Woodstock Library. Um, around tools with um, a group of children and we're hoping to maybe put together some kind of a curriculum around that. Um, but in the past, um, mm -hmm. particularly Joanne and, and Janine also has have worked with, you know, Woodstock has a bit of a dwindling child population, mm -hmm. but we've done some wonderful projects on um, Woodstock waterways, on the one-room schoolhouse. Yeah, and you did the, the Buildings in town too, right? It's the buildings, and, artwork. Yeah, um, it's always combined with a little, a little history combined with a little art. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the way the children's mm -hmm. programs go. I mean, I can, I'm old enough to remember. I went in. We, we were still puzzled about what goes on in fourth grade now in school. We're never really sure. But when uh, in the 90s, when my kids were in school in fourth grade, they were learning New York State history, and I had a wonderful time going in. I had a little lunchbox that I, I wrote historical fiction, I wrote letters that uh, let's say Sarah of Overlook Mountain would have written to Mrs. McDaniel, or, and I picked out a bunch of characters. And I just did it in a letter writing form with the children, and, and for, I was fortunate enough that I could use the names of some of the kids that were in class. And you can't do that anymore, because that, it just isn't, you know, there's not, like Debbie said, there's not that many kids around. So, so we struggle, uh, I think, we do struggle with how to find programs that are appropriate for kids and where to find the children. Mm -hmm. You know, the elementary age. It, you know, they're spread around. It's Woodstock School has only to third grade, mm -hmm. fourth grades in Boyceville. So it's hard to, you know, we just mm -hmm. keep struggling. We haven't but hit the right stride with but that. But we now yet. have an education, com through volunteers, right. Right. we have an education committee, um, committee of people, yeah. some who were in, who retired but were educators, and they're looking at, um, I think they did a, recently did a program with the Youth Center mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, looking out for um, being able to contact the high school and, you know, and try, I mean the schools are really busy trying to catch up on yes. what they yeah. lost during, yeah. the, during the kids not being there, but we're trying to create well, programming. Well, that's it. A lot of it is requires the um, relationship building. Let's say, so the event that went on with the Youth Center, the team of our volunteers built a relationship with the youth center director. He has a relationship with his students that come up there. So now we, not, not me personally, but the, t the team that wants to work with the youth, they have to keep in contact. And that's sort of the way things become that nice little back and forth where everybody goes, oh yeah, we had a good time, let's do that again. So it takes time to build those kind of things up. And that's sort of, we're in that, always in that little bit of a, um, it's a challenge, but. You know. Well, I, s I really see these days these days 
as an opportunity because we have so many new people mm -hmm. that are living here mm -hmm. and they've got to do something mm -hmm. in order to integrate themselves into the community because if they don't they're going to be standing there a year and a mm -hmm. half or two years from now wondering mm -hmm. who's this mm -hmm. so they've got to you know the, the historical society is a perfect venue for this because there are so many different things mm -hmm happening mm -hmm. it's not like well if you have a history in blah you'll be good with the you can do anything with the historical society. we have a lot of freedom yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, our yeah. old volunteer i think status and the fact that, that we're not responsible for a lot of salaries mm -hmm. we're very economical yep. you know we are always in the well, we're always in the black we're always staying, yeah <laughs> we're always meeting our mark yeah. how, meeting our how many <laughs> meetings do you have every year well, our board meets monthly, um, but then we have we actually have an annual meeting that happens in the fall, um, and we could have a special meetings. Um, and then w when we do, um, you know, de actually the whole COVID era really stopped a lot of this. But you know, mm -hmm. Richard will come in and do a presentation, or Janine on the streets of Woodstock, or um, people are just so interested, or. Um, Richard one day did a thing, um, Marion Bullard, who was this wonderful woman who was really responsible for a lot of positive change in Woodstock. Yeah, I so, think COVID has really stalled a lot of that because but, there's just so much you can do on Zoom. You know what, once you get back into where we can, everybody feels comfortable being in an indoor space mm -hmm. and having a, a lecture or having mm -hmm. uh, a speaker or something, that, that'll, we'll get back our stride on that again. You know, I have seen um, in the last 60 days, I would say since September the 1st, there has been, uh, for, as far as I can perceive it, a real opening. It's as if people have said, okay, I'm going to open my windows mm -hmm. and I'm going to spread the curtains mm -hmm. and I'm going to unlock my mm -hmm. front door and I'm going to answer the telephone. Mm -hmm. And I, I see people really expanding. Mm -hmm. And so I see a real opportunity here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's hopeful for next year then, you know, it's certainly, because we do wind down a little bit after December. Yes. And then January, February, we kind of go into hibernation. And then March and April, we begin again. We get ready for that outside sale, you know, get going. <laughs> and then, yeah, so that's good. That's hopeful to, you know, that you've, see, you've observed that and what you're, you know, people that you're interacting with. So it's, uh, it's a good thing. Then. I think it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we have to we have to get out sometime. You know, that's true. And I think people have learned how to um, how to how to just how to work it, how to work it better. You know, where they feel comfortable, where they don't, mm -hmm. and how to sort of set things up. Even you know, at our sale, we try not to. Um, last year in particular, we tried not to let it get too. We sort of t sort of move people through. Mm -hmm. So that nobody felt uncomfortable right. that there was yeah. somebody breathing down their neck while they were shopping. Yeah. We're and people were so yeah. cooperative. Yeah. Really wonderful. Tried to have that. a tried to have a path. You know, you, you know, we didn't put the arrows on the floor. No, but we didn't we put kind arrows of, on you know, the floor. Like, make sure everybody goes in one direction. We didn't get that crazy, right? <laughs> but we almost did. But we but wanted we everyone yeah. to feel comfortable shopping. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, and it's just uh, it's just all everybody trying, like you say, be mindful of, of what has to happen to be a success in these times that we've had in the past. I like your philosophy, it's all in the past, we'll keep it in the past, mm -hmm. that's good, yeah. But, but yeah, we'll just keep right on, uh, hopefully keep doing what we've all been loving to do with, with this history, you know, there's Woodstock that you were saying before, there's so many different places for people to volunteer in. You know, a person could be interested in art, as, we, as Debbie said, we have the 700 works of, I call it, great American art by great American artists based in Woodstock. That's mm -hmm. what I call it, mm -hmm. right? That's really what our it is. Our collection is really, yeah. yes. Our and collection all is really Woodstock oriented. Yeah, so I mean, somebody who's interested in art, we have photography, if somebody's interested in that. If we, you know, we are, obviously we have the books that people can, we have a collection of books upstairs that are research books that people can library. do research with or in, in what's in the gift shop and then the tools, we have that. We have just, I mean, it's incredible. I, I'm working on, uh, I'm working on the obituary file. Whoa, you know, that, is, that seemed a strange place mm -hmm. to be, but it works for me because of my uh, life in genealogy, so I'm used to reading obituaries. But we have a wonderful collection. Three binders, at least uh, two of them, which were put together by Carl Van Wagenen of people in his era of town. But so they're in a big binder, but now they need to be put together in a way that 
you could come in and say, I want to find X, Y, Z, and instead of flipping through, we have to index it. So there is an opportunity for someone to help me do that. Wow. See, those little things. And then that has to get, mm -hmm. I, in my brain, it has to be indexed to match the people file that we have. So there's this huge drawer full of, um, uh, what are we calling them, folders with people's names on them and it's all alphabetical. So we just want to match it all so that you can easily come in and say, I'm mm -hmm. looking for so-and-so and there it is. We can pop it up on the computer because some volunteers come to help put this all together. Wow. Yeah, it's, yeah. We want uh, to it. People come from all over the country mm -hmm. to do research in Little Woodstock. I mean, it's really amazing. Um, Joanne um, Margolis and Richard um, have, and have been helping people um, do research on dissertations, mm -hmm. on books that they're writing, just on family information. People call and make an appointment and they'll set up some, they'll do a little research and set up some space. Um, we also get requests for us to send things. We send artwork, um, we, we sent um, some information to the Smithsonian for one of their shows that they were having. It was very exciting. Yeah. We got invited yeah. to the opening in Washington. It's, you know, a lot happened in this little town, um, both in the art world, but also with our, our unusual history of glass making and bluestone and, yeah. and um, I mean, just the, you know, the people you can't, this, I was just thinking, this is like a perfect example of uh, <clears throat> the legendary locals. When Richard and I did this book, we, we picked it out, we had to pick out about 120 people that we, we designated them as legendary. That was our, our job, we made them legendary. But they had to have already passed away. This was the joke. This was in 2013. And Richard, Richard and I agreed, yes, because if they're still alive, they're gonna be fighting over why they're not in the book. So, <laughs> so we, we did put that together. But in the process of doing the book, uh, and thankfully it's indexed, uh, you know, you can, you can have a stretch of people where you have the, the Elwin clan in interfacing in a book with Val Cadden, who was an import for due to IBM. So now there you've got just that whole part of two different places of Woodstock history where the Elwins came in the 1700s and Val came in the 1960s, or six, you know, late 1960s because of IBM. Uh, and then you have, uh, let's, well, let's just say, Carol Harder and Bill Harder and uh, Betty McDonald. So you could, you know, Bill Harder is, came in the, uh, I think they're the 1880s, Carol's from New Jersey, and Betty McDonald is part of the music industry, a much beloved woman who mm -hmm. was totally a part, part of a whole culture, a community of Woodstock that's different than what Bill Harder and Carol Harder were working in. So that's just like, a, this book is just like a little snapshot of what's been going on in Woodstock for 250 years, kind of, that, that people come from everywhere, and they bring all kinds of gifts and talents, and, uh, and we're, we're kind of uh, charged with the idea of helping make sure we preserve their memories. <laughs> now, you, you yeah. mentioned something. You sell books. Mm -hmm. The Historical Society gift shop sells the books. The Historical Society yes. gift shop. What would motivate a person to contact you to put that book, to put his or her creation uh, in your shop? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we have over, d during the course of our season, we have, you know, anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 people come through, either coming, being part of our programs or, or looking at it. So um, it's a great, um, so we do actually have quite a bit of clientele, and often people are there because they're really looking to buy things that have to do with Woodstock. Right, right. So, yeah, it, you, yeah. know, you know, we're able to... Um, Violet Snow, a few years ago, wrote a book on, um, it was actually, it's actually, March or Mary, right? March or Mary, yeah. it's actually yeah. fiction, but it really deals with the suffragette movement, mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, people were just fascinated by the fact that she lived here, and she worked for the oh, local yeah, paper. I, yeah, I really yeah. got yeah. into that one. Yeah. yeah. yeah was a good I was, a, I was a, a member of the women's group that, uh -huh. that. But she was so good. Yeah. Uh -huh. She came on the show with a hat and all. Yeah. So anyway, so and you know, and, and it was a great because there's probably it would be hard for people. People might never. A lot of people might never might never have known that that book existed. Mm -hmm. So by putting their book there, you know, we really open it up. There's a the marketing piece. Often writers love to write, but they don't like to market. So you know, we can yeah. be a little helpful. Yeah, it is in hard. That. Yeah, which reminds me of your your um, what you did a few years back was like doing a book. 
talk and a book yeah, fair. Yeah, I had a book you know, day. Mm-hmm. A book day. Oh, it was at the flea market. It was, it? yeah. Uh, I mean, did you do it twice or once? I did it once, once. and then the, we had the we had COVID, and, and then we had problems. So we'll because have to do it again this year. Because there's room to do something like that again, and mm-hmm. that might be something that could happen on the porch mm-hmm. at the historical society. Even is because yeah, there are so many that. local mm-hmm. authors having a book talk where you could have a schedule and people could come and listen to the person that they wanted to have. Um, and so there's, because there is a big opportunity to be able to help you write. Authors love to write, and it's it's sort of like artists. I think artists love to paint, but they don't necessarily like to do that bit where you have to go to the gallery and sell your artwork mm-hmm. all the time. That's why they get agents, I guess. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it, it, uh, your your book um, day was really popular. I think. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it, I felt I felt yeah, like it was. Yeah, I think it was. So. You know, there's a here's the you know we're just brainstorming a little bit, but here's an opportunity may appear for you to help come with the historical society. It's just a day of authors coming and talking about their books, which mm-hmm. is what authors which like to do. Writers. Yeah, yes. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's kind of fun. Well, there's so much there. Mm-hmm. So when is the when is this place open? Say a person is wandering through town. When is a good when can they go see it? Well, How can they well, get we're it? O- we're open in the summer on the weekends. And so now we're, we're open by appointment, but there's no show. Right. There's, there's research we're open by appointment. So right? we usually have a, 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 a show going on th- most likely from April through October. And we're open on Saturdays and Sundays from um, 1 to 5. Mm-hmm. Um, um, or by appointment. I can't tell you how many times somebody will say, I'm coming to Woodstock, we get it on our answering machine, and I'm, I really wanted to see this show, so could, would you let me right. in? And it's, it's part of our homing. Yeah, we just do it. The yeah. archives, yeah. there are people working in the archives all the time, but, they, you know, but mm. people can call and make an appointment so they're prepared for you. Um, because if you just drop in, you may or may not during the right. week find someone there, and they may not be able to get together all that you need. We really encourage, I would say, um, go to the website. Yes. If, if you have somebody, that, that website has the, uh, the hours, and then there's the email. And if somebody wants to do research, then they're just going to email us and say, this is what I'm looking for, and then they'll, they'll get put in touch with the right person to help them do their research. If it's during the summertime and we have a show up, same idea. I'm here, like Debbie said, I'm here midweek. I can't be here on the weekend. If one of us is available, we'll go down and give a tour of that. We we love to do that. You know, mm-hmm. we give them a whole tour of the of the exhibit and talk about the building and you know send them off with a brochure. Hopefully, they become a membership member. You know that kind of thing. So, really, the website is um, is really where the place where the action is. If there's there's um, the website has. The names of all the board members, the names of all of our advisory council members. It's got a history of Woodstock. It's got a history of the Historical Society. They also have loaded up. What are they loading up? All the uh, finding aids, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's full of finding aids of what the what what are in the archives. Yeah, yeah. It's really a good place to just go visit. I mean, if you're up in the middle of the night, <laughs> Google Historical Society of Woodstock. <laughs> And uh, you may come across our YouTube channel, mm-hmm. right? Yes. If you, vi- you should visit that. Our, our best, it's got over, for us a lot, a thousand hits. It's got over a thousand hits. Is the one that Richard did about the Christmas Eve program? Yes. He yeah. did, um, during, because when that yeah. first Christmas during COVID, when it wasn't going to happen at the Village Green, we, everyone felt yeah. so sad. Yeah. And Richard had written an article about the first Christmas Eve presentation that happened in Woodstock in the 1930s. And mm-hmm. so um, one of our board members, Louis Arlt, is uh, an actor and he does audiobooks. So he read the story of the first Christmas Eve in Woodstock and Richard um, added photographs and you know, we, have a, we have old photographs in our archives, all those wonderful John Pike um, yeah. paintings of the Woodstock Village Green on, on Christmas Eve added some great music oh, yeah, and it yeah. was just so reminiscent yeah. of that feeling you get when you're down there. They did it was a perfect job. time to do that too. Everybody was missing all the our regular routine so it was it really is I think still the most popular uh, uh, video that we have on our YouTube channel but um, we put up on YouTube all of our we have uh, talks so they get recorded so everything's done on Zoom so you can also, anything that we've done in the past three years is there on mm-hmm. the YouTube. So how yeah. often do you have talks? Well, it seems like we're getting 
two a year, maybe two or three a year that we'll do on Zoom. And I think I think yeah. actually I think that we did more. Yeah, I think a little bit more. Okay, I, it just feels like it. Yeah. We just had one on um, about. Um, we just received a grant and had two mm. um, of our paintings. Um, um, con um, yeah, conserved. Conserved, yeah. cleaned, yeah. and repaired, and um, and um, a wonderful art conservator in Westchester County did the work, and she did a um, a presentation right. um, about what that process is like. Fascinating. It was just fascinating, fascinating. about. How they how they sort of bring it's, the life back. It's to a, a much it's a much must watch for anyone that's interested in how you, we all have artwork hanging in our house that's like 60, 70, 80 years old and it's dusty and it's dirty and it might be a happens, little rip. Right. So I go with she, all that. It's she, hanging on my wall. She took <laughs> these two pieces of artwork that are very very important to the history of Woodstock and gave them new life based on this grant that was received and it's just a fascinating to watch how, how, how she did her process, what she looked at, mm -hmm. what she realized about the painting as she was cleaning it, it totally. Historical Society Woodstock mm -hmm. and just Google that one uh, mm -hmm. art restoration in there, uh, it's fascinating. I, listen, I want to ask you something. Do you sit down in January with your board and say, okay, we're going to do three of these programs a year, who are we going to do? Or do they just sort of bubble up out of somebody's soul? I mean, what it is from the creativity? Both, yeah. We have a, um, both, a programs yeah. and exhibition committee, and we've actually been working all summer to prepare for next year. Um, but because we're all volunteer, we can put things together at a whim. I mean, it's not so unusual that we'll get this someone will donate something amazing, or someone will come in with an idea and we can put it together, especially yeah. the presentations yeah. where we can schedule it. We have a lot of freedom to do that. So we, do, we plan our exhibits um, yeah. ahead of time, so we know what we're gonna be doing next year, but we can't, um, but- The presentations, yeah, we can certainly, you know, something comes up and we say, hey, that sounds like it's a great somebody idea. somebody writes a book yeah. and we want to do a book signing, yeah. we can put that together very quickly. Yeah, yeah. so we, we do plan, but we do think on the fly. <laughs> well, a lot of that, too. Yeah. It, it seems to me that the Historical Society of Woodstock is its own planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> yeah, yeah, we operate, uh, you know, pretty independently, yes, and we, we certainly, uh, we can... We can leave the planet every now and then and go to other organizations and interact, which Debbie's mm -hmm. been responsible mm -hmm. for making sure that we, she's a great networker uh, out into the other arts organizations because we do cross-pollinate each other with what we have about the artists in Woodstock. So you do have to do that, but we, we do certainly have our own little corner up there mm -hmm. in Como uh, doing our own little thing and uh, hopefully doing it well. And hopefully more people will come out next summer mm -hmm. and visit and hopefully they'll come this December and shop. That'd be fun too, mm -hmm. you know, to meet everybody. We have brochures, you, everybody can take their brochures home and if they That'd want to be become, a, mem mm -hmm. become a member, they can do that easy enough. So you have, tell us again, you have this event the first two weekends in December. Right. Saturday, Saturday and, and Sunday, Sunday both. Yep. Nine to three. Yep. Nine to three, so you're there all day. Yep. yep. We have two shifts of people. Debbie's working on her volunteers. You know, people be there 9 to 12, 12 to 3. Do you need so volunteers for that? Know, I think, are you wrapped up with your volunteers? I think, I think, we're, I think yeah. we're together. Yeah, yeah. But, but, that's, it's, but we have a lot of new people working yeah. that we didn't have a couple of years ago. Yeah. People who've come and have been part of it and have volunteered. Yeah. Do you so know why? Fun. I think because we have a good time. Yeah, yeah. No, I think so. <laughs> hey, that's yeah. great. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. they all know so that's friendly. my philosophy. If yeah. it's not fun, then we have to relook at yeah. what we're yeah. doing okay. because... Because, you know, it, it's an organization, but it's also, for many people, it's a real passion history. So it's like a, um, you know, sort of, not necessarily a hobby, but a real passion, and people yeah, really want to come there word. for, yeah, yeah. They, they, they want to do it, and they want to, and yeah. we want people to have a good time I think that's, it. that's the right word, you know, you have a, you have an interest and a passion mm -hmm. about what you, what you're looking at and what you're doing, and, and that kind of thing, and that's what carries you through, it sustains you. You know, in the in the two two or three hours, whatever it is, you decide you're going to volunteer. You're there because you, you're you're receiving as well as giving. That's how it works when you're successful in an mm -hmm. organization like that. I also should ask. I should add that on November nineteenth, we're actually doing. I yes. Like, yeah. So much for that's, our organization. that's brand new. Brand new. We're right. doing a card right. making right. Um, um, workshop um, at the Historical Society at two o'clock, and um, artists um, Roberta Sickler and Sarah Mecklem 
um, who are just wonderful. They've, we've done this before, but it's totally free mm -hmm. and that we have all the supplies there and they're there to help you. And it's a great it's time fun. to make that yeah. special holiday card. Yeah. You know, people get very serious about it, so they rarely make more than one or two <laughs> cards because they're really working hard. But it's a fun, it's a fun, you know, yeah. we're there probably yeah. from two to four. And that's something that just got created in the past Couple two of weeks. Years. Yeah. Two weeks, though. Weeks. I mean, you just yeah, that's we why put it's this fresh together. Memory, Somebody yeah. suggested it. I think people are. I think people want to come out. Yeah. So we decided you know, that's to do an it. Extremely, extremely important thing to yeah. do yeah. is make a Christmas card. Mm -hmm. When you receive a Christmas card that has been made, mm. right? It's the response is really different. I mean, it's. You see the other cards, you look at them and you go, ooh, this is whatever it is, adorable, cute, whatever, yeah. but then oh, somebody yeah, made the, the this one. And these it, people yeah. are very, yeah. and we had some wonderful, we, we did a pre-COVID once, yeah. and it was so successful, and then COVID sort of stopped it, but now we're back. Well, I wanted to invite everybody to consider following the Historical Society of Woodstock on Instagram, or follow us on Facebook. It's historical Woodstock. Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe and like, mm -hmm. right? And uh, or visit the website because that's where you'll find out all of the things that are going on year round with the Historical Society of Woodstock. And I think that's the best way to get the word out is, uh, you know, make sure that people are going to your YouTube channel and all the shows you've got on there. We'll be the next ones up, right? But it's fun to uh, be able to have that always working out there where people can pop in in the middle of the night or whatever they're doing or you know what do you do you what do we call it board texting or board you know driving mm -hmm. or whatever it is you know what people do you know uh, plumbing your way through your social media screen but we're out there too so, because that's, that's where people very, are that's very you know? important yeah especially in today's market people are truly suffering from insomnia mm -hmm. and and so you have something to offer them <laughs> yeah you know yeah. that's that's not a our joke, website it, it, it'll, it'll make you wake up it won't put you to sleep honest there's so much information on there well <laughs> if you have insomnia that's what you are as a way which is which is a tremendous thing yeah. I, you know people are really suffering from insomnia i'm, I'm seriously mm. i've been working on a book and i'm it's coming up finishing finishing soon and i'm thinking about doing a book on sleep because nobody's sleeping no well you could incorporate your reiki in that too probably right oh yeah, yeah for sure. you can't get through the body you know you yeah. can't get through a, a reiki session without going to sleep yeah. but yeah. not everybody knows reiki well we we'll have to keep working on that right <laughs> <laughs> that's true well it's fun but well, we're gonna have a good time in december and then I, I certainly appreciate you having us in here to chat about the historical Are you kidding? So, yeah. How could I not? Yeah. And then we have to talk about this, sweetie. This guy. Oh. This is one of your members, isn't yes. he? Yes, yes. So, so when do you fire back up again? You do Christmas, and then what happens? We, we, Go we, work, dormant. we work in the background quietly, mm -hmm. and then when the, um, uh, the sale comes in April. In April. April. In April. Yeah. So, that we, so for yeah. the new resident, we can look forward to um, a renaissance mm -hmm. in April. Right, Absolutely. and we have a wonderful yeah. schedule planned, so. That's fabulous. That'll be fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll always be talking on social media. Don't, we're not, <laughs> we don't ever really ever go to sleep, so yeah. <laughs> we're always out there. Well, t you know, you've talked a little bit about the food. Where do you find the food? Oh, these, as yes. far for our gift shop? Well, you know, these two guys are local people, and mm -hmm. um, this is uh, Sue from our from our flea market. You know, she was there, and I sent her up to talk to Debbie. So, she, um, she also does wonderful honey. Yeah, and um, and it's just and it's 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 really nice. For many years, we used to make our own jam at the historical society. We would pick strawberries and blueberries and and do the jam. Gosh, I we, miss those years. Yeah, we, but we lost some of that energy <laughs> right. and we lost some of those great jam makers. Yeah. And then well, we were feeling so sad and then Janine introduced me to, to, yeah, to, to Creekside yeah. and yeah. They're, it's really delicious, yeah. really good. So yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. You have really lovely things. Yeah, we're all networking. I, what we, I guess what we do know for, need for next year is knitters or crocheters, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're looking for knitters and crocheters yeah, for yeah, next so year? Just want to, you know, you got a bunch of yarn, you want to volunteer, make something, and just bring it along, and you know that kind of thing. This is something I've never been able to do. I'm left-handed, and all of my life, when it when it was time to learn how to do those things, I got told, "No, you can't do this. Oh. You're left-handed. You mm -hmm. can't do this." Mm -hmm. 
but I think I think it was more than just being left-handed. I think they just didn't see me as a a good candidate, you know, for whatever that is. Mm -hmm. But this is lovely. Yeah. So you haven't shown us this one either. Oh, this one. Now I, I remember this is I, 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 who this, you know who did. I don't remember who did this, but it's we, a, have, it's a, we have many of them. It's a lovely little wrap. I mean, these are. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. We have the whole, what, five or six of these. Yes. Right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And people, they come in and they try it and they wrap them like around yeah. and around and around. And then you have cookbooks? Um, we have our own cookbook. that we, we have several cookbooks that we sell there, but this one is called Woodstock Party Fair. And um, it's a collection of local um, um, recipes, but also it has a little, hit. we have photographs and, and um, Jean White did illustrated all the different sections, and we they come with little stories, often many of them as to how they when it was used for. Um, it, it's, it's really fun. It has it has appetizers, desserts, beverages, main dishes. Um, we really you know we have a little history. Richard did an introduction. We really talk about that Woodstock for years was known for its wonderful Woodstock parties. Mm -hmm. So we decided really? yeah. to try to um, to try to gather. Um, that information and put together a cookbook. And this is also a wonderful painting that's from our collection by Reginald Wilson. And that book is for sale. It's yep. for sale, ten dollars yep. at the at our gift shop. And these books are for sale. All for sale. Yep. Among me, we really we have a, a pretty good size. Oh yeah, it's a good shelf. <laughs> a good shelf. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, Ellen, I think we want to thank you for all this wonderful evening that you have made possible for us. And I thank the you, ladies. The scenes workers, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Without Ellen, it would never happen. And I know because I tried to take a class, and it was obvious very early on that there was one student that was not talented in this. And it was me. So thank you very much, Ellen. Thank you. Say good night. Good night. Thank you.